The FAA just published a new document that hints at what community-based organization guidelines for recreational flyers are going to look like. If you're a recreational flyer, this will likely change the way you fly your drone. In this video, I'm going to explain what community-based organizations are and what the FAA is expecting CBOs to have in their guidelines, and also, more importantly, how this is going to affect you. You might be wondering, what is this document anyway? Well, it's an advisory circular. It's not law, but it offers clarification on FAA's interpretation of the law. This is the fourth edition for this very specific document, and it offers insight on things recreational flyers should do to fly their drone safely. Now, it also contains information about community-based organization guidelines. Congress mandated this document in 2018, so yes, it took four years for the FAA to get this done. So what is is a community-based organization, you say? Well, it's a non-for-profit group that has a mission to further model aviation, and it is approved by the FAA now with this document. Recreational rules requires you to follow the guidelines of a CBO, but until now, the FAA didn't approve neither the CBOs nor the guidelines. This is what this document is for. The FAA says that CBOs will be able to submit guidelines for approval that pertain to the operation of their specific users. Flight tests, for example, will have guidelines for foam and model airplane, while the FPV Freedom Coalition will have guidelines for FPV drones. I'm sure there will be others as well. Now, this may seem all nice and dandy, but there's a bit of a catch. Up until now, the recreational rules were rather simple. Nine bullet points, or eight, depending on who you ask. Those can change without an act of Congress, but you always needed to follow safety guidelines. It's just that none of them were in place until right now. With this document, the FAA is putting the onus on the CBOs to create new rules in addition to what is already in USC 44809. That's the regulation code for recreational rules. When the FAA asked for comments, I replied that these rules needed to stay simple. I was actually surprised to see some of my comments made it word to word in the final document, but the overall tone of the document is still the same to me. The FAA is asking CBO guidelines to be, well, a bit too complicated. And let's be clear, the FAA doesn't say these are the guidelines you need to have. They basically said, well, in order for us to approve these guidelines, we highly recommend you have the following, wink, wink. It's kind of like the mob telling you you're taking someone out for an airing. They don't really mean it, but they kind of mean it. Now, don't get me wrong, recreational flyers need to be educated and they need to be doing the right thing. Trust me, no one believes this more than I do. But there's a fine line between safety and overkill. Too many rules mean that no one is going to read the rules or even follow them. Also means someone needs to enforce them. And let's face it, the FAA doesn't have a good track record at the moment of doing this. Boom. Roasted. We have a hard time enough right now to get people to understand and follow the nine basic rules. So what are these new guidelines going to look like? Well, there will be restrictions about flying over people. That's right, there aren't any restrictions at the moment in USC 44809. That's kind of hard to believe. There will be common sense restrictions about carrying hazmat or carrying weapons or not flying carelessly or recklessly. By the way, this is the FAA's inspector favorite words. And not flying in airspace that's temporarily restricted. Some mentions of pre, during, and post-flight safety. To me, all these are great guidelines. And then for those that fly FPV, there's an entire special paragraph in there aimed at making sure that you're proficient to fly your FPV gear. And a big emphasis on visual line of sight and visual observers and communication procedures and pre-flight inspections, again. Then for everyone, not just FPV pilots, there will be guidelines on maintenance and record keeping and software updates and guidance systems, and automated features, and external payloads. That's right, that's a long list. And as you can expect, there will be guidelines about night flying and needing to have a strobe light visible from three statute miles, just like in part 107, and lights that show the direction of flight. And again, making sure that you're flying within visual line of sight at night, in case it wasn't clear for the daylight guidance. And expect some guidelines on medical condition for the pilot and your visual observer. And of course, drug and alcohol use, or not use, I guess. And personal checklists for pre-flight, rest requirements for the pilot, but we're not done. Expect guidelines on discussing emergency procedures, including what you should do with loss of power, navigation, telemetry, structural failure, battery fires. And CBOs will be expected also to have a safety incident reporting program in order to collect data and help mitigate hazard in the future. As you can tell, 44809 used to be nine rules. Back in July of 2021, I made a video about this topic. We'll put a link up here. And I mentioned that no 
one was really paying attention. I was worried that the FA was trying to use CBOs to turn recreational flying into, well, a mini part 107. More rules just mean that this is going to be more confusing for the users. This means that more recreational flyers are going to just fly and skip the rules. At least that's what I think at this stage. Someone who's flying under CBOA guidelines will be able to do things that someone under CBOB might not be able to do. Law enforcement officers are already pretty confused about the rules. Most recreational flyers are confused about the rules. Heck, some of the FAA employees are sometimes confused about the rules. Boom roasted. And we can hardly blame them. This is not going to help. So what to expect moving forward? The FA Open application for CBOs. They said it's going to take 90 days to approve. Well, they said it was going to take a year to get this document done. <laughs> So what we're gonna do is we're gonna wait for them to come out and then we're gonna compare them for you. In the meantime, let us know what you think in the comment section. How will this affect you moving forward? I have high hopes that organizations like Flight Test, FPV Freedom Coalition, or even the AMA will help to simplify these guidelines. I also hope that the FAA understands the necessity for the keep it simple, KIS approach while they review and approve all these guidelines. So with that being said, happy flying.